All right. Well, thank you for joining me today um, and coming to your last session. I hope that this session is um, worthwhile for you. My name is Stephanie Perkins. I am a first grade teacher at Johnson Elementary, and I'm here to share with you my journey of using Minecraft EDU with my first graders to support math instruction. Um, before I go farther into it, I should mention that since my school has purchased Minecraft EDU, it has been bought by Microsoft, and so it is now called um, Minecraft Education Edition rather than Minecraft EDU. So if you were to search for resources, you'd want to use the new product name, Minecraft Education Edition. Um, let me go ahead and show. So how many of you are familiar with Minecraft? I'm sure most all of us have heard of it. Um, could you raise your hand if you've used it in your cl for classroom instruction? All right, so we've got a handful. So feel free to chime in and add your input. That'd be great. I am um, different from your other K KET presenters because I am not an expert. I am a beginner. I would classify myself as a novice. Um, but I have learned so much this past year and have just scratched the surface to learn that Minecraft EDU could be used for just about any content subject for any level. Um, so in case you're not familiar with what Minecraft is, it is categorized as a sandbox style game. And um, players' objective can vary, and then that d decides your outcome. So they can dig and look for resources. That's where the mine comes from. And then they can create things, and that's where the craft comes from. And you work in worlds, when, and each world has its own biome. So you might be in a jungle or in the mountains or on an island or so on and so forth. Um, within Minecraft, there are three modes. You have survival mode, and that's when you have to find all of your resources and all of your materials and create them and craft them for what you need. So if you wanted to um, make a cake, then you'd have to grow your sugar cane, find your wheat, get a chicken and get the eggs, so on and so forth. Um, then there is creative mode, and that's when the players have endless supply of whatever they need. They can just go to their inventory, and the blocks are there. They can build with their blocks. Um, then there's the Minecraft EDU mode, and that's just an added layer to the Minecraft game. And that is what you can use to modify for your instructional purposes. You can decide, do you want your students to be able to have access to fire? Um, do you want to become invisible so that you can monitor what they're doing without them seeing you there on the screen? Um, do you need to gift them materials that they might need for, to complete a certain task? Or um, one I use a lot with my first graders, do I need to um, transport myself to them or them to me if they've wandered too far out and they're lost and they can't figure out where the rest of us are? It's just like going on a virtual field trip to kind of keep everybody there. Um, so those are some features that you might use in the EDU mode. Um, what I chose to use for my first grade project was creative mode. I wasn't interested in so much of them being able to know some of the sophisticated techniques with Minecraft EDU, but I did want them to be able to apply their math objective to what we were making. So for most of the projects, and I'll, I'll let you know when I didn't use that, feed, that mode, most of them I stayed in creative. Um, let's see, so how did I start this journey. Um, I've been teaching, this will be my 17th year, and last year I finally decided to pursue my rank one. And in order to do that, the best choice for me was to use the um, program offered through the state, the continued education option. And um, when I signed up to earn my rank one, it takes you through a process of reflection to find out what do I need as a teacher to grow. What do my students need and what does my school need? And through this process, I recognize that I don't incorporate technology within my math instruction with the same consistency that I do in my other subject areas. And I'm not sure why that is, but it's something I realized I should probably improve upon. And so that was my need. And then when I started to look at what my school needs and we looked at all the data and studied the school report cards, we are having a hard time showing good growth in math. And so as I did some more investigating, we traced it back to operations and algebraic thinking. So while my students are not at the accountability levels, my job was to hopefully give them enough support so that down the road they'll show the growth that we need. So that once I declared that, I um, 
went to my library media specialist asking her for any technology resources she may know of that I could use to support math instruction. And she said, we just purchased Minecraft EDU. No one in our building really knows about it. Why don't you play around with it and see what you can do? And I said, well, all right, that sounds great. Um, but I know nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing. I think I called it Mindcraft at the beginning. I didn't even know the name. So. Um, with collaboration of my library media specialist, we planned some summer dates last summer where we invited students from our school to come up and just play for an hour. We turned on Minecraft EDU and they just played and boy were they excited. And I turned into Pesky Perkins standing behind their shoulders asking them questions. What are you doing? How'd you do that? How's this work? What do you think I should know if I were to play? And boy, I got lots of information, so much so that we realized we needed to do that three or four more times that summer. And then once the school year began, I started to introduce my first grade classroom to Minecraft EDU. Many, just about all the students love Minecraft and the ones who didn't pretended they did because they were so excited by everybody else. Um, and then, but they, there was a little bit of a, a learning curve because playing on a PC, which we had at school, was different from what some of them had used at home between a tablet and a learning system and things like that. So all of us needed a little bit of practice. So um, between, Going to the tech lab where we have our license at my school, um, the first four or five times was just exploration. There is a tutorial world that's offered, and um, we would just get on that, and they would learn how to navigate on the program. Um, also, we'd started a mi Monday morning Minecraft session. The kids could come before school and play then because they couldn't get enough of it. And not all the teachers knew about it, so some classrooms were using it and some weren't. So that was an opportunity for everybody to have access. And then for myself, I had a group of students on behavior modification charts, and their reward was Minecraft time. Um, it was a very, very a strong mo motivation for them. They loved it. And then I also had some kids in the after school program that stay at school until six every night while their parents are working. And so I would invite them up too, just to give them a break of just being in that same room the whole time. So um, I got plenty of experience from watching the students and they are the ones, what I couldn't research and figure it out, they knew, they knew the answer. So here's a short video of what it looked like when we were all in that very beginning learning stage last fall. Okay, so this is our second time in the tutorial world in Tech Lab, and the students are just working on learning how to navigate through Minecraft, helping one another. Right now, the students are allowed to have free play. We have already gone through the tutorial world and they've learned how to navigate. So now today they are able just to go into creative mode and just explore and try to build. As you can tell, they're pretty excited right now. Allie, tell me about what you're making. I have no clue. No clue? Are you just exploring the building? It is nighttime. Okay, so you need to get a material, pick out what you want to fill it with. Move it down there. Okay, now hit E to make your menu go away. Now down below, do you see how those are squares across your screen? You, have, you can do it two ways. You can use the number keys to hit the number of the block that it is. So you start where your flower is, and that's block one, two. Right, so count over there. How many is that? There you go. So now that that's highlighted, when you build, that's what should come up. So you point your cross to where you want it to go. Oh, no, do the right click. Not left. We needed to learn on your mouse. Right at that point. The button next to the. <laughs> we got there. Let me show you. The button right here. Look where my finger is. Someone's walking in front of you, though. There you go. You're welcome. You're good. Yes. You want to build something? Okay, so do you see that little white plus sign on your screen in the middle? Every time you look around, it moves. It's like your target. Okay, wherever you put that, that's where your object will be. 
So then you hit the right click button on your mouse. There you go. And then you break it with the left. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that was the beginning. You have to start somewhere, right? Okay. So now that my students were familiar with Minecraft DDU, um, I had to figure out how I was going to use this, pr this piece of um, technology to support my math instruction. Um, I forgot to mention earlier when I picked my students, um, or my students' needs to find out that it was Operation Algebraic Thinking. We had a gap in our scores with our free and reduced lunch population. Um, we had 0% distinguished. So my goal for this was to make it challenging and try to help push the proficient up to distinguish in that category. So I knew that I wanted it challenging. And I also knew that I didn't want to use Minecraft in a way that I could just use normal classroom manipulatives for. A lot of the resources I found as I was doing, looking around on everything, wikis and YouTube tutorials and things like that, um, they would suggest like maybe using the 3D blocks as base 10 blocks and do activities like that. Well, I can do that in the classroom without Minecraft. So I wanted to come up with a way that would just involve some critical and creative thinking and have them actually apply the math objective rather than just using it as a, another learning material. So one day I was driving through town and I passed an elementary school nearby that's under construction. And they have lost their playground because of, it's now the construction site there. And they have um, put a temporary fence up in the front yard and that's the new play area. And I thought, well, that's, that's kind of sad. I know my students would be bummed out by that. What if we create a playground on Minecraft EDU and invite the first graders from that classroom to log in and we could virtually have a play date? And it would be a little bit of like a service learning project for them. So that's where the idea started. And um, so once I started to evolve with that, I, of course, did all of the uh, math instruction in the classroom and gave them a pretest on the objectives and found out where the learning needs were. And I decided to make um, a math playland that had four zones. My first zone is an archery zone, and I actually got that idea from a student. One day when we were in that tutorial world and the kids were just exploring, this one little boy named Jack just kept shooting these arrows everywhere. And we had already talked about digital citizenship, about, um, you know, being safe and not hurting one another, not being cruel to animals or destroying each other's creations and things like that. So I said, Jack, what are you doing? He goes, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm, th I'm not doing that. He said, I'm trying to figure out how far that mountain is over there. So he was shooting as a way to measure distance with his arrows. And I thought, let's do an archery zone. That would be perfect. So the objective, the math objective for this zone was to understand addition problems as subtraction problems. So the idea was that the student would put their player on zero, launch their arrow, see where it lands on the number line that leads up to the bullseye, and the bullseye was a 20. If you were to go up the number line, you could see that. And then, depending on where the arrow landed, you could build an addition or a subtraction problem. 15 plus 5 equals 20, or 20 minus 5 would equal 15. And they would show their um, equations on the side using their number blocks. So this is just the standard that we met. And this is what it looked like to start with. Um, when you use Minecraft, you can decide to pick a world, create a world, and they place you in a world where it's a surprise. You don't know what biome you'll be in. Or you can opt to start in a flat world. And because I was new at this, and I was still a little shaky of my confidence on how I was going to actually measure their learning, um, I decided to make it a flat world every time. I controlled the climate. I wanted it to be sunny at noon every day <laughs> so that I wouldn't have to have those unexpected surprises just for my sake more than anything. Um, so that's what it looked like when I first got started. And now I'm going to show you a small screencast of how I built that, the archery zone, and then you'll see the students actually using it. I see 16 counters. That means there must be four. Michael, four. how many? Four. Michael, how did you know that without even seeing them? I was counting ahead, and if 6 plus 4 equals 10, then 16 plus 4 has to equal 20. <laughs> And I just wanted to demonstrate as a beginner how easy it is to build with blocks using Minecraft EDU. 
So right here you can see that I have a number line that leads up to the target for their bow and arrows shooting. Um, and I have zero here, but I need to fill in the other blocks in between the zero and the five. And I need my blocks that I'm going to use. So I've gone to the inventory by pressing the letter E, and this pops up. And I'm under the building block tab. And I've selected the colors that I wanted. I just picked different colored wool blocks, and I put them there. And I always include the grass block. In case I hit the wrong block, it's easy for me to fix it if I already have that in my inventory. So I have what I need. I'll press E to remove the screen, and now I'm ready to build. At the bottom of the screen, you can see all the blocks that I've selected, and the block that's outlined is what, will you, is what you'll build with. So I'm going to start with my light green, and I just right-click where I want it, and there it goes. Now I'm going to um, go to my next square, and I'd like for that one to be orange, so I'm going to use my little scroll bar and select the orange block, right-click, and there it is. And... I want the next block to be the magenta color, so I'll scroll up, right click, and then I'll come up here and I'd like the next one to be my yellow wool, so I'll right click there. So now, if I double click the space bar, I can get a little aerial perspective, I can see that my number line is built. The other feature I wanted to show you that I've learned to use is how to build with more than one block at a time, and it saves all kinds of time. Press E. Again, and out of screens one and two, I want to go to the second screen. And here you'll see information blocks for Minecraft EDU, and these are the special blocks that have different features to them. And this one right here is where I found my border block. And all I had to do was drag it to my inventory and find it. Um, but now I'm ready to build my fence on top of the border block. So I'm going to go up to my search item, and I'm going to type in fence. And there it is right there. So now I'm going to click the fence block, drag it down to my inventory, and hit escape to get out of there. And this is how I will build um, with more than one piece at a time. I'll press M, and I'm going to go to the build tab, the building tools, and then I will click fill clear tool. So this is going to help me place things down more than once. I will press M again to remove this. And what you do is you right-click. First, you have to have the fence tool in your hand. So then you would right-click where you want this to start, and then you go to where you want it to end, and right-click again. That is how I built all my fences, and that is also how I laid the cobblestone down to get that border around my archery zone. This is our Minecraft map playlist. Okay? And what you're looking at is I'm in the air and I'm looking down at our archery field. So let's see. First one says 20 minus 11 equals 5. Do you want to recheck that one and see if your math is correct? There might be a, sm I think there's a small bug in that thinking. Okay, that's right. So you can go fix that equation. There we go. Check all of your equations and make sure you put the right numbers where you meant to put them, okay? 20 minus 15 equals 5. 15 plus 5 equals 20, so they're on the right track. I'm also evaluating how they're working as partners. I'm seeing some students not quite on task. This is the first time they've had to follow directions explicitly and not just free play. But for the most part, I think they're getting the hang of it. All right, so that was the first zone that we tried to complete together. And so our next zone was our playground zone. We called it the play zone. And the math objective of this was to be able to add three add-ins together to equal a sum of 20 or less. And so um, after I've taught the skills in the classroom, just through typical activities that we all do, um, the Minecraft objective was to use build a playground structure using three different kinds of blocks. Those were my add-ins with no more than 20 blocks total. And so um, to get to that point, 
in the classroom, we just had some learning centers where they just constantly were learning about how to add three add-ins, making 10 out of two of the numbers. Um, we solved story problems. And then we went on to Google Images and we um, researched just different obstacle courses. And we talked as a group of what are some things that we could actually build in Minecraft with our 3D blocks. Um, they were put into groups. They each decided on a certain kind of structure. And then they sketched out their idea on graph paper. And we said that each one inch square on the graph paper represented a Minecraft block. So they were able to um, work through that together before we even arrived at the lab. Um, and there they are just working together. And I wanted to show you the play zone lesson. I forgot to mention for each lesson I did have a rubric for them that explained I'm looking for teamwork or collaboration skills. Um, the math objective so they could remember what to do for that, as well as the Minecraft uh, skills. Um, so, you know, they, so many of them are on so many different levels. Um, at one point, I had some kids building these huge roller coasters, which were fabulous, but I needed to measure the math objective. So um, not to hinder their creativity or to be a stickler about it, but just to get us started. Some of them I did have to say, OK, let's, can you, can you take that back? We might have to get rid of some of that to try to really show what you know. Beside each structure that they built, they had to put a sign with their name, an equation that represents their block, their design that they made, so that I could make sure that they really were trying to merge all of those objectives together. So here's how the Playland came out. Okay, so you're. And this is my sandbox. That's your sandbox there? Excellent. All right. Look at that, Lorelai. That's great. So you're ready for your checklist, okay? How's the waterfall working out? Good. Did it go the way you thought it would, or are you still trying no, to figure it out? I went into the other people, then we had to redo it. Oh. So are you going to try again? Yeah, we're putting it over here this Okay, so what else shall we use? Um, well, oh, yeah. oh, I have an idea. What? what, what? what? Not <laughs> For those students who wanted to try to make a trampoline, we don't have the block that we thought we might have on this version at our block? school. So does anybody have an idea of something that might work <laughs> instead? Philly. Some of these two blocks that is a switch, and that because you could do it underground, and then it pops up if you do that switch. You do the switch, and then you put a block on top of it, and it'll help you bounce. Yeah, yeah have you tried it? Try it and see if it works. All right, so that was our experience with that zone. I'm going to skip the screen class reflection. It was just my thoughts on really realizing how tough it was for first graders, and I really think it'd probably be true for all ages, um, to be able to achieve all of those expectations for the content, for the social skills of working well together, and then also the Minecraft piece of it. So to be able to do all three of those things and achieve all of that was a learning curve. I mentioned before some kids have built these huge roller coasters, and we kind of had to scale it back a little bit. Um, a couple students forgot to use three different types of blocks, and so they weren't able to create a correct equation that we had three add-ins involved. Um, so just things like that. So when I moved into our next zone, which is the water park, the water zone, I was really conscious about set, giving them all the support they need to make that happen. Um, this is what it looked like before they started. All I had to do was go in, and I found out, just like with class in class, color coding helps so much. So I would just make different planes, different colors, so that when the 
kids arrive and they log in, they just knew that their group was supposed to work on yellow or red or pink. It just helped a lot with the organization and it kind of kept them confined. Um, something I mentioned on the screencast um, in the beginning of this session were the border blocks. Um, I would write that down if you are new to Minecraft EDU. Those help so much. A border block puts an invisible shield up. So when I put the border blocks on the ground, they can't go past that. <laughs> so that was important that they didn't leave this water zone area and go play in the archery zone that was across the way. Um, and then I just put something on top of it. I just used fence posts. You could put whatever you want on it to let them know it's not going to work. It's like an invisible fence. But it was, it was very handy as far as management went. So this is what it looked like before. And this is what it looked like when they finished after each of the groups had worked on their area. Um, this math objective was more of a formative assessment for me. I wanted to know if they could apply the strategies that I had taught, strategies at the first grade level, such as counting up, counting back, doubles, doubles plus one, things like that, um, making 10, if they understood fact families. And so for this project, um, we learned the skills in the classroom. I had some. I created a PowerPoint game that we played um, where they had to apply these different problem-solving strategies. And then we watched a couple short um, YouTube tutorials that I found. One taught how to make a water slide. Another one taught how to use water and make it still so it doesn't have a current. And um, just looked a little bit of that. And um, let's see what they produced for this one. Oh, and I also want to tell you, I went ahead and did cooperative learning groups, and I gave each child a role within their group. So we had the peacekeeper. They were the ones to make sure everybody was working together and sticking to the plan that they designed. Then we had the, um, what do we call them, the math master, and they just were the ones to make sure that the, the objective was met. Everybody built their sign that said an equation, and it was accompanied with a strategy that you could use to apply to that equation. And then we had the Minecraft designer, and their job was to make sure that whatever they had agreed on to make, um, they were sticking to that. Because once they get in there, they're so used to just exploring and creating, which is awesome, but um, they could get off track pretty quickly. So we had someone in charge of that, and that did help. That was some good support for them. Ellie, Ellie Lynn, what are you building? I, I just made the last slide, and I was testing it out, and I don't know how to get out. Oh, I think if you hit shift, do you know which key says shift? Yeah, the boat went down without you. Look at that water slide. You all are some fast builders. Okay, I'm watching. Oh, that's awesome. You used a lever? Very neat. All right. Uh-oh, that flip book is what Put we made in the classroom. There. It had a list of strategies and examples of how to use them, so they used that as a guide while they were over there. Very nice. You saved it. Bedrock, don't dig that bedrock. Do you see that? Correct? Don't dig that. Do you see that? Why? Don't dig that. Yeah, I'm because if you do, um, you go into this um, world that you do not want to go into. Don't yeah, don't. Uh, is it called bad rock? Bed. Yeah. Help me get out. I want to get out of this bed rock. So, let's take a look and see how they did. I was, um, it was fun to watch them create. Down here, you can see that they've um, used some levers and like a, um, I think it's a piston pad that you can bounce off of to land in the water. Over here, someone has made a hot tub. Over here, here's a platform that you jump off and land into the water. And we'll move on. This is a nice water slide someone built. I showed them a tutorial. Looks like we have a little bit of trouble with the water spilling out, but that's something we can fix. Um, let's go over to this zone. Again, you see a nice water slide that they created. I like how they have the pathway that leads up to the top of the platform. <clears throat> let's go visit this red zone. I can see the equations from a distance. Let's take a closer look and see how they did. <laughs> All right, well, I allowed the students to make any equations they would like, and you can tell this student was eager to use some large numbers. 
However, there's a bug in their thinking and the answer is incorrect. So while they did try to use doubles, um, I need to help them go back. Maybe I'll bring some base 10 blocks with us and they can solve that to make it accurate. Other zone. This pink zone back here in the back, you can tell that these um, students are not as experienced with Minecraft. They have a little bit simpler structures, but that is fine by me. Just the fact that they're learning and they're trying. Um, we have a 2 plus 3 equals 5, and when I zoom in on the sun, sorry for the shakiness. Um, yes, it says her name, it says the equation, and she said counting on. So she used the strategy from there. That and the love of yourself's bag and you put me in and what's up? Oh, oh. <laughs> uh oh. Don't touch the smart no, don't 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 touch the smartphone. Wait. You're gonna have to fix that when we go over, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you need to listen, focus on me, okay? You need your math equation. You forgot the math objective. And then you're gonna have to make a sign that says your name. You'll type the equation again and then you're gonna tell me the problem solving strategy. Okay. Okay? There's your checklist. I can't believe I wrote that. That's all right. We'll fix it. <laughs> Didn't know that would work either. I had no idea. But it was sensitive on the smart board. Okay, so this is our final zone. This is our clubhouse zone. So it was the culminating event. It was meant to be challenging, but it proved to be much more challenging than I had planned. <laughs> um, so my idea was that the kids were in groups and they all had a different project to build for the clubhouse. And in my mind, what I wanted them to do is be able to apply everything, their strategies, their addition and subtraction fact knowledge, and basically run a living inventory. So I was going to give them a set amount of blocks, say 100 brick blocks, and they had to keep track of how many blocks they used. And if they needed more, they had to write it down as an equation, bring it to me on a slate on a dry erase board. And then if it was correct and they can explain their thinking and how they figured it out, I would gift them more blocks so they can continue building. That was my idea. Um, so I ran into some problems, but I think I'm going to show you what I did to prepare it, and then I'm going to explain how, how it went a little crooked. Um, this is just some classroom activities. We um, split them up into groups, and I gave each group different math tools to solve a problem. They all got the same story problem, but they each had to solve it using the math tool they were giving. So one group might have had to use a number grid. One group might have had a diagram of a part, part, whole structure. Um, other group had base 10 blocks. So they all saved the same pro solved the same problem using a different strategy, had shared out, and then we'd rotate and try it again. So those are the activities we did in the room. Um, we also had the school book fair about this time, and they happened to sell the Minecraft um, what are they called? I'm sorry. The, the, the cheat sheet, the guides, the whole set of the guides, and they're specialized and specific. So some kids had brought those in, and so as we were going to build the clubhouse zone, they did some research using those books that the kids just brought in on their own to share. Okay, so let me show you through a screencast what it looked like before when I thought this was going to be a great activity. So the way great this activity. final zone will work is I've placed the students into differentiated groups um, based on Minecraft building ability and also their level in math. This group one, this is what the one is for, has, is in charge of the outside structure. So I started them off with brick because I needed to have some kind of space ready so that the other groups who are building inside the structure could go ahead and get started. They are free to modify that if they need to. Over here for group two, is the group that's going to be building inside structures like the bathrooms for the playhouse, the concession stand, um, the eating area, and things like this. Back here at group three, this group's in charge of creating and crafting the food. Inside the chest, I've given them things they would need, seeds, water, the hoe, and the shovel. Um, I'm gifting them the eggs because I didn't want to have to contend with the live animals. I don't know that if I'm ready yet as a teacher on that level to have animals around. Animals um, just change everything. So I gifted them the everything. eggs, those are in the chest. And again, they have to keep track of their inventory and if they need more um, or when they run out, they need to come over and form it as a subtraction or an adding problem before they can receive more. Over here is group four and this group is in charge of the furniture, um, making the picnic tables for the eating area. They wanted glowstone to use for lamps and lights. Um, features like that. Here's some steps if they need them. And 
I've given this group smaller amounts because of le learning levels so that they will be able to work with numbers like 20 or less um, other than the planks. Those are 100. And again, I've taught them how to manipulate the number grid, so I'm hoping the hundreds chart will help them with that. And then over here will be our tennis court. I've got it started with the path for them, but the group will, has watched a tutorial on how to make a tennis court using Minecraft blocks and here are their supplies. They have um, glass panes over here. They also have glowstone so that the court can have lights. They wanted to build a locker room with um, blue wool blocks. We have the red stained clay, um, grass blocks, and then spruce leaves. If they want to add a border to the tennis court, they can use these as their fence. OK, so that was the idea. Um, I had set this lesson. All the other ones were in creative mode. This one I tried to do in the Minecraft EDU mode. And what I thought would work would be um, they could just go over and get the blocks and build. Well, they can't, they can't pick them up. So if it was a quartz block, it was really supposed to be as heavy as quartz, and it wouldn't work. And so the students let me know that they needed a pickaxe. And so then I gifted them all the diamond pickaxe so they could do it. Well, then we ran into problems because the kids who had the quartz blocks, the diamond pickaxe would work. But the kids who had, say, the red clay, it would shatter it because of the different weights and things. So it was a mess. It was, it was it's going back. I'm like, OK, so let's, let's try something different. This time, I'm going to let you go into creative mode, but just don't take too many blocks. Take only the number that I assigned to you. Well, that was just dumb on my part. That's like asking a kid to go into a candy store, but only take one piece. Just, you know, if they have free range, it was, they don't, they just didn't. It was too hard for him to keep track of, really. So um, then I had to go back. We, I, our session was up in the lab that day anyway. So I went back, and I tried to rethink it. And I just had to kind of manipulate my plan for the lesson. Um, and what we ended up doing was that rather than counting back from a set amount, um, they counted up, and they had creative mode. And they were able to get the blocks, but they had to keep tallies of how many. And so they still created their equations for me based on their data that they collected while they built. So it was a little bit different than what I had in my mind, but I think we still met the objective. But what the best part was is you can differentiate really easy. The group that was in charge of the food, were, those were my most advanced kids on Minecraft. And so I was still able to keep them in survival or Minecraft EDU mode while the rest were in creative because they knew how to do it. and. Um, they didn't have any trouble. So they actually grew all the food and made it, and then they brought it inside for the concession stand. So it was nice to have different levels of that. So um, this looks great. It was fun. The kids begged for Minecraft EDU every day, and I had to schedule it. Um, so we didn't get there nearly as often as they'd like. Um, but they loved it. Here are some products of the clubhouse. That's the boys' bathroom one group built. Um, on the left, you'll see like just the main area. They had a fire pit and a table, and they had a first aid booth. I think it's the white structure. On the right, of course, is the tennis court. They used spider web block to build the net, which I thought was something I wouldn't have thought of. Um, so they finished it, and it worked really well. So when you look at classroom data to see if this was really effective, these were the math objectives within the strand of operations and algebraic thinking. And um, for the objective of 1.0A1 and 1.08. On the Minecraft side of it, they did great. They could do the computation. Those objectives involve explaining your answer, so it's a written component. And when we did this unit back in February, not all of them could thoroughly explain their thinking on their problems. It was more of a, a writing um, block than it was anything else. But by the end of the year, this was also my area for my student growth goal. And they had mastered it. So at this time, um, the 74% weren't there, but they ended up getting there. And then this is just a quick little chart to show my pre and post test results of student growth. All but one showed growth. Um, and the one that didn't, didn't regress. He just stayed the same. So um, my goal originally was 80% of growth for my kids. And so I mastered that in that extent. So the next thing I want to show you is to wrap up the whole um, unit. We invited our families up because they weren't able to view our work. It was on our private server with the EDU mode, um, the package that we had at that point. Now it's different now that it's been bought by Microsoft. 
but using the old package, they weren't able to see it at home. So um, let's see here. You can see they created the presentation. I had to help, of course, but they told me what they wanted to say. Um, we met in the library for the first part, and then we took them to the tech lab where they could actually share their products with their family. And you'll see um, the ownership they had. Welcome to our massive Minecraft. Thank you for coming to see what we have created. After meeting in our groups, we decided to make water slides, water shoes, diving boards, an optical course, hot tubs, and a lazy river. Um, what was the hardest part to do in the play zone? My play zone group. Who wants to answer that? It's your opinion. Brandon, what do you think the hardest part was? Um, we had to count our blocks because, um, we started with a little one and we had to get harder and harder every day. So um, that's how we um, got harder and harder. And each group had to do exactly um, which kind of block and count it. Players get harder than air. Is that in the archery zone? Who wants to explain the archery zone? Ellie Lynn, do you want to answer that? They had to try to get the 20, but they couldn't fix. They um, had to make two equations. Right, and did the arrows hurt? Start explaining how you all made the food. How'd you guys come up with the idea of the tennis court in the locker room? Uh, that's for her. Yeah, we'll let that group. Brandon, you can answer that? Um, because um, when we watched a video for the tennis court. We watched a tutorial. Yeah, we watched a tutorial. Um, Scott was talking about how to make a tennis court. We did it outside because tennis courts are really outside. <laughs> So that completed the unit that we did. Um, I guess what I learned the most from this experience was just how much Minecraft EDU lends itself to all so many different content areas and age levels. Um, I didn't ever ex expect to um, for it to help my students so much as far as strengthening their collaboration skills. Um, that just was a huge bonus. They were all, the buy-in is there. They were already so excited about it that they wanted to work together because they, they just couldn't wait. Um, and so this really made them have to learn how to communicate their ideas and help one another. And before they just built something, they had to talk to their group members before they started create. And so for six-year-olds, I think that was, that was just as important as the math that they were learning as well. Um, if you are interested in any of the lesson plans for this unit, I have a website. It's math for jaguars, for being the word for F-O-R, mathforjaguars.weebly.com. And all of my plans are there, along with some resources that I found really useful when I was trying to learn more about Minecraft. And um, because I have the free version of Weebly, I wasn't able to upload my videos. So if you want to see these video clips again or the screencast, I have a YouTube channel. And it's JJ, stands for Johnson Jaguars, Mind TV, all one word, M-I-N-E-T-V, the letters TV. So you can see all the resources there if you'd like. So are there any questions? Oh, I also wanted to show you that this is the website for if you want to see some lessons. Um, Minecraft Education Edition is the name of it now. 
and it runs on Windows 10. And you can go to this website if you'd like to find lessons or worlds that have already been created by other teachers, or I'm not sure exactly who creates all of them, but they're there for you to use. And it's pretty neat. I know that they just came out with the geometry world um, for you to see. And it's, they have just hundreds and hundreds of ways that you can use this. So are there any questions that you have? Yes. Oh, step up to the mic so we can all hear you. <laughs> In my school at Essel County, we have family fun night once a month. I was just wondering what kind of feedback you got from the parents uh, concerning the Minecraft. Uh -huh. Did the parents know about Minecraft prior to and so on and so sure, forth? Sure, sure. Most parents have heard of Minecraft mainly through their kids. It's just crazy how popular it is. So they knew of it and they knew that their kids enjoyed playing at home. Um, they, the feedback was wonderful. They loved how the kids just viewed it as fun, the ownership that they took. Um, many parents have asked me to have a parent night without the kids. They want for them to be able to play without their kids around and learn how to do it so that they had some insight. Um, there was an afternoon during the book fair that the library media specialist did host that where while the store was open for the bookstore, um, they could come into the lab and play and have some of that time. But the parents loved it. They, and they really want to learn more. So. Um, it was pretty exciting for everybody, I think. I'm really excited about this upcoming school year now that we've had it for one year. And um, we also hosted a couple teacher sessions after school. And just this, now that they're into it and more people will know about it and understand how to navigate and use it, I think it'll be pretty incredible of what they implement. I know our fourth grade is, they always do a big Kentucky project. I don't know the curriculum as well at fourth grade. It's been a long time since I taught fourth grade. Um, but they built. They want to design a replica of our city, our hometown, Fort Thomas, back when it was first built. And so they had to study the maps and things like that. And they're going to try to build a replica of it and implement things like that in that fashion. Um, I know our second graders built a town or a community. And they used it more for economics that supported our junior achievement program that we do um, in that way. In my class, we also used it for a setting. They went in and they had to build a setting to go along with the novel that we had read, um, The One and Only Ivan, and they each had a part to build. And so in that way, we kept the server open. So as other classes came in, they added to what the other students had built. And so then my class was all excited to go back to see what was different or what was new, and then they added on. So um, the learning potential is just unbelievable for all ages, parents and kids. Um, I just thought of at the end of the school year, my teammate wanted me to help teach her how to use it, so we put our classes together. And we just did a new world, didn't know what we were getting into, and it happened to be an island. Well, even though we didn't give any kind of assignment to the students, they just started working a plan out together. And they all started this first grade island. And one group was in charge of the tree houses, and one was in charge of something else. And they just kind of developed it on their own. So. It was fun to see how it took off for them. But those are just some ways that we've used it so far. But we definitely had the parent support and the parent interest also. Question. Yes? How long did this year last? It took me about six weeks because I had the classroom component and some of the lessons. You know how one lesson could take four or five days to teach. And then we also had to schedule time um, in the tech lab because that was the only place where we had the license. So it was availability. I think if I had everything accessible right there for me, I could probably do it in half the time, about three weeks. And it was supplemental to our math program. We use everyday math. So this is just kind of what I built in as on the side. Um, would you talk a little bit about user accounts? I know like, if on an Xbox you have to add friends to be able in the same world. Uh -huh. How did you create user accounts for the kids? Okay, I don't know a whole lot of those details because I was really spoiled by my library media specialist and our technology director. director. Um, all I know is that our students logged in with their student ID that we use for all of our computer programs. Um, I think she might have, I don't know how she set it up before. I'm sorry, I don't know as much. Um, but I do know that I had to go in and just save on the server, just as you would save any file to keep save our work from each time and open it up back for them. So um, I wish I had more of those details, but she kind of just got me ready. 
Yes. I'll give you, I can. I can give you her information because she's a wealth of knowledge. She's phenomenal. Okay. Are there any other questions or ideas? Have you used it in certain ways that you'd like to share about? I'd love to learn from you. Don't be shy. <laughs> oh, sure. Come, come on up. Did you compare data to the other first grade classes that didn't use Minecraft? Oh, no. That would have been brilliant. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did not compare my data with theirs. We, I, we compared student growth with our, um, with the whole, this, um, PGIS and everything. And I know we were all very comparable um, with our student growth data, but I did not, I didn't do the specific data from this. This, um, I didn't teach two of the strands because based on my pretest results, two of them weren't needed. So it wasn't the full um, eight components within the operations and algebraic thinking. But I'll do that this year because that would be much, much better. That's a great idea. <laughs> I just wanted to put in a plug for KET. We have a media lab and we have Minecraft EDU in our media lab. So if anybody wants to come and try it out, you're welcome to, you know, bring your faculty or bring students in and you can play around with it here. Be great. I wish I lived closer, we'd be there. <laughs> All right. Is there anybody else? Any questions? Um, something I didn't talk about too much were the extensions you could put. Um, on that final clubhouse zone, I've thought about what if I added a monetary value to the different bricks? Um, that would add a whole nother level. What if I wanted to make it more of, set it up more like a service learning project and they had to write a proposal for why they wanted to build what they built and um, how much money would it cost and prove their point a little bit more through a proposal? That would be another way to extend it. Um, I hope to save this. We haven't figured out how to do it exactly, but to save the zones, but clear my student work so then other grades and classes can go in and explore and do what they'd like with it. So um, I think just this one little unit has a lot of possibilities. <coughs> All right, is there anything else? Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> Thanks. So what were the issues with the animals? Oh, <laughs> they, it's just fun with animals. I don't know, and they can spawn. So they might have a horse or a pig, and before you know it, you have 50 pigs or 100 horses. And um, I, with my little ones, I had to work a lot with digital citizenship. One time I saw these sheep just spinning on this tree. Like they tied them with, I don't know, they just get silly with them. They don't, they don't make that connection of... Let's pretend as if this were real. It's, it's not intuitive for them. So um, as far as just trying to really monitor a content objective, it just kind of got in my way. But you could see older kids, like if you wanted to build habitats. Oh, absolutely. Doing it. Okay. You would right. want those to do all your crafting. On the, I mentioned how we did the Min Minecraft Monday mornings, and they came before school. And on th those sessions where there wasn't a specific learning content, um, they had to earn badges. So they had to know how to craft certain things, and animals were definitely involved. And with the influence of the older students in the lab with the younger students, it was a whole different scene. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I... Yeah, I would say don't do it. For the purpose of this unit, it got crazy. But you definitely need animals for a lot of the things that you can do for, for Minecraft. That's a good question. All right. There's nobody else? I think you're, are we okay? Well, thank you. All right, well, thank you all for coming to the session. Thanks.